Hey, it's Mike again. I'm right back. Repeating detail component certification objective. Before I get into it, I want to tell you a story. You know me, I'm full of stories. The uh, Lipgo Coliseum Bus Depot uh, episode. When the bonding company came in, uh, I had Petroselli, they hired Petroselli to complete the work. Lipgo came, the bonding company came in, and then Petroselli was uh, hired by the bonding company to complete the work. So I, had, I wound up going over to Sandy Petroselli's uh, location over there by the Queensboro Bridge. Now, granted, sure, I've had episodes, you know, over the course of my career, but not like the one I saw there. So anyway, we, we talked that there was the uh, possibility that bonding companies come in and start seizing assets. Well, I don't know what happened, but I'm sitting there very quiet in that office, big office, not many people there. When a project manager went into one of the telecommunication project manager's offices and just started beating the living shit out of him right in the office. So as twisted as I may be from this tempest and whirlwind that exists over in that melting pot in some of these high-end lucrative projects and all those uh, New York State governmental agencies that hand out all the millions, um, I didn't wig out that bad. I've seen some people really off the deep end you know, pressure. They wouldn't know what pressure is. They wouldn't know what pressure is. You know, there's been a time when I, when I had cracked under the pressure when I was a younger man. Um, but when I found that um, I was able to pick myself up and dust myself off and come back and come back and come back and persevere, I have less and less tolerance of folks that, uh, that, um, that refuse um, to, uh, to do the same in, in certain instances and, and throw their hands up. It's almost something that uh, has become a pet, fee, pet peeve of mine. Not as much as uh, false bravado. That's my biggest pet peeve. I, don't, I, I need some way of finding how to ignore that physical or mental abnormality in, in individuals that have false bravado. It's just such a pet peeve of mine. I mean, we all have them, right? That, for, I mean, it has, and it's not, it's gender specific. It's always a male trait that is, you know, the pet peeve that I have. Usually the women, regardless of how they act, doesn't, doesn't bother me. If they fly up the handle with the anger and all that, well, I don't really, doesn't bother me. But for some godforsaken reason, when a man comes at me with that false bravado and has no basis uh, or no leg to stand on, and, and I got to deal with that, it just irritates me, and I, I got to compartmentalize it and absorb it. But and I got to keep the straight face, but know that in the back of my mind, as much as I may look like I'm fully uh, calm, I am so so irritated with that behavior. I take it. Oh, but man, oh man, when I tell you, I, I, I absorb it. Because if the shoe was on the other foot, I could be so much more of a demanding individual. So much more. That's the side that I, I usually don't show. I don't show the side of me uh, if it was my money and how I would behave if it was my money on the table. And people were burning through it like uh, it was going out of style. Like a few general managers that I met from Harvard University, came out of Harvard and blew through lots of capital expenditures. How much was it? 1.74 billion? Wasted. Chapter, chapter 11, huh? Nothing like a restricted stock option that goes worthless, right? Well, if I was two years earlier, I would have retired a rich man. Let's not even start that episode. In any event, we are at repeating detail components. And that goes for folks in the field, but people do the same shit over and over and over. And they're prototypical, a lot of these false bravados and these... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, these uh, mid-level or even senior-level senior managers that just are all barking, no bite. And uh, 
I guess the more liberal I get, the more amusing it'll be. I'll just have to deal with the fact that it's irritating. I still might not dwell on it. That's a repeating detail component as well. If you constantly talk about the same thing over and over, obviously it's rattling around your head, right? And uh, I guess now in my life, I'm taking a look back at all these companies and, and these owners and their sons and daughters and their behaviors were such so reprehensible. Behavior was reprehensible. And I was warned of that. I was warned that I would see it. I should have listened to my mentors, but I didn't. The grass wasn't as green as I thought it would be. Anyway, I've learned a valuable lesson. Repeating detail components. Pardon me, I'm a smoker. This is a certification objective. Repeating elements are common in architectural projects. Masonry, metal decking, and wall studs are some common elements that repeat at regular intervals. Like that mason I met when I was working at the uh, FDU Madison in, in uh, Madison, New Jersey. He, uh, I was a mason tenter. He was a big, heavy set Italian guy. He'd go in the parking lot and lunch and he'd drink. He was going through a divorce. And he was one of those guys just screaming and bullying. And he couldn't get the thin set to, uh, to form so that he could lay this beautiful tile that they were stealing from, uh, they were bringing in one, one door, the contractors were stealing it out the back door to make tables, robbing multi, robbing everything. These fucking thieves from the, from the owners, all this, these developers putting up all this money, and these fucking guys just walking it out the back door. In any event, this guy, when I was young, fucking breaking shit, throwing tools. I see Masons fucking getting all angry, pushed out of shape, making it, uh, you know, you get in a blue collar world and some of these fucking guys and these girls are just, their behavior is reprehensible. It's reprehensible. Listen, if you're 60 and, and, and you're, you're exhausted because you're weathered from all that lime that you've been putting on the wall, well then you should have changed your profession, right? Don't blame me, you're fucking miserable. <laughs> Sorry, I had to add that. Repeating detail components. Holy shit, Batman. Masonry, metal decking, wall studs are some common elements that repeat at regular intervals. The tool to help create and manage these types of elements is called the repeating detail component, like me. And it's located in the component flyout on the annotation tab. And we've seen that. This tool lets you place a detail component in a linear configuration where the detail component repeats at a set interval. This allows you to draw a line that then becomes your repeating component. The default repeating details is common. Brick depicted in a section. Now, this is similar to the array. Uh, it's common brick depicted in a section, repeating in regular courses. Now, let's just show that real quick. Let's do that in, uh, in elevation. We actually have that right up here, isn't it? And right here. So, but this is the model. Keep in mind, this is the model. So, its cut representation has a pattern. This isn't the, de the repeating detail component. This is a 3D element, not a 2D uh, detail component, nor is it a 2D repeating component. We, if this wasn't here, we would embellish this with that. But again, if I turn this onto course, we wouldn't see. Well, you wouldn't see the, 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 the brick facade. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use that. I'm going to give you an example. I'm just going to give you an example. So, yeah, the uh, line is going to uh, act as our repeating component. And the repeating component will be brick in section, and it will repeat in regular courses. Creating elements like this not only lets you later tag and keynote the material, but also gives you some flexibility over arraying these elements manually. Right, now, now just as a uh, bin manager's note, beware the limitations of repeating detail components. Before you decide to use the repeating detail component tool in any of your details, you should be aware of its limitations. Although repeating detail components can be scheduled, they cannot be tagged or assigned a keynote as you would for a single detail component. 
If your annotation methodology relies on tags and or keynotes, we recommend you avoid the use of repeating detail components. Instead of the repeating detail component, you can use a single detail component and then use the array command. Okay, so um, not recommended if you're going to use this to schedule quantities. It'd be interesting to see how it would if I count it as one. Anyway, let's let's uh, go through this now. Before you create a repeating detail component, we'll cover the properties behind one, so you can get a better idea of how they work. Start the repeating detail component command and draw a sample line using the brick type. Exit the command by pressing escape or clicking the modify button and then select the brick repeating detail. In the properties panel, click edit, type to open the type properties dialog box. Let's review what each of these settings does. So, component, detail, repeating detail component, let's read through the dialog box, the tooltip. Repeats a detail component along a path, we talked about this. Repeating details are primarily used in plan, uh, useful in plan views and section views. You can specify the layout and spacing of the repeating detail. Now, boom, once you invoke the command, you see within the context of invoking the command, you have the draw and the pick lines option. Now I can use that as my repeating element, or I could use the line tool, and then within the status bar, click to enter a start point. Well, I can't really s select the edge of this uh, subregion of this crop region. I could just draw a line, though over here, and as you can see, it's a repeating vertical coursed brick component. And um, that will be helpful, and again, this could easily be a parametric block that you can create in AutoCAD and all that other fancy stuff. However, it's not as intuitive, it's not as powerful. So if that's your workaround, then that's your company's culture, and that's the workflow, then fine. It may not be forever. The industry may demand that it's not. Again, Moore's Law. <laughs> All right, so, um, blah, blah, blah. Let's review uh, what each of these settings does. So let me finish it. And again, you could both set it like this or like that. Let's just get it down to some manageable um, size. And then get out of the command and select the component. Now, I thought there'd be a number. Now, that's in the array. There's a, in, in the array, when you do this with the array, you'll have an actual number. All right, so now let's take a look. Detail. This setting allows you to select the detail component to be repeated. Layout. This option offers four different methods. Oh, well, I just did it. I didn't uh, actually go through any of the... Uh, variables that allow you to manipulate these particular uh, variables because I just rushed through it. So you know me in Russian. I've been Russian since I was a pledge for Kappa. My pledge name was Chaps. It was kind of like Animal House over at Harvard on the Boulevard. So let's get back to that. Let's go back to Alti, repeating component. Okay, now, within the context of it, I didn't see any of the parameters that allowed me to do any of that. Let's review. Oh, click edit, oh, see? Click edit type to open the type properties dialog box. Sorry, edit type dialog box. Well, there you go. Brick standing with motor running section. Okay, so now we have detail. This setting allows you to select the detail component to be repeated. Let's see what we got loaded in here. Again, all of those detail components we saw before, inclusive of the dimensional uh, nominal cut lumber. So leave it at that. Layout. Layout. This option offers four different modes. Fixed distance, fill available space, fixed number, maximum spacing. Now, it goes into each of these in detail. Fixed distance. This is the absolute spacing between components. For example, a strictly defined center to center placement. Okay? On center. This would be great for, uh, for floor joists, right?
fixed number. This mode sets the number of times a component repeats itself in the space between the start and end point, the length of the sketch path. Now that will, I would think, allow the grout would to be a bit it would be spaced evenly, but it would the grout would be probably you better make sure that the number when you subtract out the entire array of courses leaves the exact grout height or you're going to have grout that's probably thicker than it should be. Alright, so fill available space. Regardless of the value you choose for spacing, the detail component is repeated on the path until its actual width as the, sp as the spacing value. Let's repeat that. Regardless of the value you choose for spacing, the detail component is repeated on the path until its actual width until its actual width as the spacing value. And we go through all these. Maximum spacing. The detail component is repeated using the set spacing and the number of repeating components is set so that only complete components are drawn. Revit creates as many copies of the component as will fit on the path. So, thickness, fixed distance, we, we saw, we saw. So let's just see if we were to um, go through these and change them and then just apply them as they sit. So here's fill available space, apply. Okay, let's reread what it says. If you see the line, now keep in mind the uh, linear line, what's the word I'm looking for? The extents of this repeating pattern. The extents of this repeating component. It's linear distance. It's, um, it's constraint. It's absolute value. Um, now, fixed distance is the absolute value, uh, the absolute spacing between components, for example, a strictly defined center to center placement. Now, fill available space. Fill available space regardless of the value you choose for spacing. And you can see there is a value there, 2, 171, 256. Regardless of that, the detail component is repeated on the path using its actual width as the spacing value. Its actual width as the spacing value. Now, uh, fixed distance, let's go to fixed number and hit apply. Fixed number, this mode sets the number of times a component repeats itself in the space between the start and end point, the length of the sketched path. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Now, did we assign it a number in the beginning? No. I don't recall if when you invoked a command if it gave you that option. Right? I think it allows you to edit the option, but it doesn't give it to you within the context of invoking it. We'll check it. All right, so the next one, we did fixed number, we did fill available space. Let's do um, maximum spacing. And then we'll do fixed distance, which is the one that it was defaulted to. This is maximum spacing. Maximum spacing. The detail component is repeated using the set spacing. 2 and 171, 256. Maximum spacing. The detail component is repeated using the set spacing and the number of repeated components is set so that only complete components are drawn. Revit creates as many copies of the component as will fit on the path. So if I change this then to two and hit apply. Take a look. Revit creates as many copies of the component as will fit on the path. Okay, so lots of variables, right? Um, depending on how uh, you want this space, you have options. You know, besides just detail, you have layout, layout options. Inside this option, if I go back to it, actually let me undo it to where we had it right there. Let's go back and type, we'll take a look at it. Now, the next, uh, setting inside it's a checkbox this option adjusts the placement of the last detail component in the repeating detail if inside is selected the last component will be drawn inside the endpoint of the repeating detail line if inside is not checked the last component will be drawn outside or overlapping the endpoint of the line Uh, definitely has an impact on it. Now, the line doesn't get any bigger. We 
You just push it on the inside or the outside of the line. Okay, so, kind of like nosing, right? Like nosing from the stairs a little bit. Spacing. This option is active only when fixed distance or maximum spacing is selected as the method of repetition. It represents the distance at which you want the repeating detail component to repeat. It doesn't have to be the actual width of the detail component. Okay, well there's that option. It doesn't say, oh yeah, detail rotation. Uh, but there is a bit manager note. Using formulas to perform math, in the example of the imperial brick, you have a distance of 2 and 2 thirds of an inch, or 2 and 171, 256 vertically, between bricks stacked in a wall. Because there are three brick courses in every 8 inch, uh, or 20 to 25 millimeters in the United Kingdom, you don't need to know the exact distance between each brick. You can use Revit to calculate the value. Revit is formula driven, so you can enter 8 inches divided by 3 in the spacing field and it will calculate the distance for you similar to using a formula in Excel Wow, well, that's actually pretty cool alright so yeah you can actually use that uh, 8 inches divided by 3 formula in the spacing field and it will calculate the distance for you so if I was to go 8 inches divided by 3 in the spacing field and hit apply. Enter a value of formula starting with equals. Oops, sorry, yeah, I know all about Excel, right? Equals. Well, there you go. So yeah, that's a, that's a powerful tool. Now, detail rotation. This option allows you to rotate the detail component in the repeating detail. I'm just looking at the uh, head here. This is another sample file that we're supposed to open up. This, this option allows you to rotate the detail component in the repeating detail. Oh, okay, let's uh, take a look at that. Let's, is there a uh, 90 degree clockwise? And there's, we do it this way. We could do it that way. And we could do it this way. Uh, see that? All right, great. So, that being said, that is pretty much the uh, conclusion of it. To an extent, there is another exercise they want us to open up uh, to illustrate this a bit further. So let's do that. We have some time. Let me cancel out of here. Let me undo anything that I did. Make sure I uh, have this correct. Okay, now. In the C17 sample of William RVT, which we have open file, we have already created a repeating detail to illustrate brick and mortar coursing. At the base of the exterior wall, you will see where a portion of the model wall assembly already contains a layer signed with a brick material. However, individual brick courses are not shown. Let's embellish the view with the repeating detail component to better communicate the design intent. Okay, so this wall, if we were to look at it, the structural makeup of it, you can see that there is, let's see here, uh, wood sheathing, wings, wood stud, vapor, gypsum, structure, blah, 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 masonry brick right on top, right in front of my face. Well, there it is. Within the uh, wall assembly, there already is um, a brick course, but they want us to embellish it anyway. So as you can see, we talked about this in a few uh, exercises earlier, um, and this is a very, very powerful tool. And again, Dow. We'd rather me drag hatch patterns when the wall wants to encroach the property line. This, that way, it's a ridiculous way. This tool makes that so much more obsolete. They might as well be back in the Stone Age. Yeah, I know, I'm still a little bitter. What are you gonna do? All right, so uh, it's still fresh. The wound is still fresh. All right, so yeah, they did do that. So let's do it a little differently. To better communicate the design intent. Let's cancel out there. Zoom close to the bottom portion of the detail view. At the base of the exterior wall from the out tab of the ribbon, locate the detail panel and click component, repeating detail component. From the type select, choose the brick repeating detail type. Got that already selected. Start at the, start at the bottom of the inside face of the brick layer. Draw a line up to the bottom of the windowsill 
as shown in figure 17.21. So bring a repeating pattern. Look, even the grout, look at the grout lines are even perfectly troweled. One of those masons call that little tool? My cousin Richie would know. In any event, he's hazmat. <laughs> we'll see when I need it though. All right, so let's bring this up here. So, uh, repeated detail component. From the type selected, choose the brick repeated detail type, start at the bottom, bring it up to the sill. If the last brick detail does not appear at the top of the sketch line, you can either drag the line further up, which it doesn't, or it does, but let's just say it didn't. You can drag the line further up, or edit the type properties of the repeated detail family and toggle the inside parameter. Well, damn, I wish it didn't. Because I wanted to, I wanted to, let's see if we could get it to, nah, it doesn't, too bad. All right, well, there it is. We don't have to worry about going into the uh, edit uh, type. So, um, we don't have to apply the toggle or edit uh, inside parameter to it to get it to get it the way we want. Now, let me undo this for a second and look. Yeah, so it wasn't in this wall, or it's not shown in this uh, view. Well, this is a stacked wall, right? This is a stacked wall anyway. Let me just double check something. I want to look at this, at this component here. And just click it for a second. This, this is the um, brick on a wood stud, but it's not showing the brick. Is this thing set the right way? Hold on. Fine. No, it's, it's not shown, but it, here's the thing. Up here, it was shown. You see up here? I think because... I look at this section again just to dissect this. Hold on a second. Look at this. Okay. Is this one continuous wall? No. Well, these are the, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, this is the same exact wall, yet in the top detail we see the brick courses, but in the bottom we don't. You know, it's, it's not a stacked wall, it's the same wall, the same wall type. If we look at it in 3D, we'll be able to make sure of that, All right? Well, see, they're showing on the bottom of this that it is, it is the brick, but as you go up the side of the building, maybe it's on this. Let me take a look around here. So this is just shown as like a stucco. Now this, let's see. That's that. Now this one here. Okay, so yeah, it is. It's just that this wall was uh, in elevation. If we look at the wall assembly in elevation, we'll see that indeed it is not a stacked wall. It's just, because uh, you remember, the stack wall is created a little differently. You can control the width, a depth of the individual courses, whereas here, you can't. This is just a basic wall, not a stacked wall. Um, you remember that from our earlier chapters. All right, so yeah, I mean, even though at the top, it's still being shown as brick, it's really not brick. Excuse me. All right, so I'll just deal with that fact for now. Let me close the 3D view. And let me go back to the wall section north to come back down to where it was, and I'm not going to uh, go any further with that. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, press the escape key or click the modify button to exit the repeating detail component command. Select the corrugated metal wall tie components you place in the detail components exercise. Hold down the control uh, key while clicking each component. So let's click one, hold down control, click the other one. From the Arrange panel in the contextual tab of the ribbon, click Bring to Front. If necessary, you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge the wall tie components so that they display in proper relation to the mortar lines of the repeating brick detail. This is actually a mesh. This isn't like you think. This isn't like a, a, a wire hanger. This is a course of, uh, of mesh that, that goes between the, um, the, the the masonry unit. And that goes for um, lots of things. There, there are beam ties, too, that, that do this as well in the upper courses. So this wall's going to come down on you, right? So, yeah, if we wanted to, we got to remove these. So you can't, you can't place this here unless you drill a hole in the brick. So what it's saying is create both of them and, and move them, but... I don't think I'm going to move these both equidistantly and get them both in the grout line. So I'm going to, first of all, bring it to the front, right? Isn't that what it said? Bring it to the front. Let's get this one to the front so we can see it. 
and let's get it up, let's nudge it with the arrow key, select it, and then just let's nudge it into the grout line. Now, the further you're out when you nudge, the less granular the nudge is going to be. So you have to zoom in really close to get it really precise and get it right in the middle or at least close enough where uh, it's depicted. Let's get this tie up into the center of that one and zoom in a little bit and then nudge it down a little bit better. There we go, there we go, there we go. Anyway, so... Now, I was almost just going to bring something up. I just thought of this story from Microdesk. I'm not going to bring it up. All right, so there's that, right? Blah, 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 Great. Although this detail still needs annotations before you can think about placing onto a sheet, you can begin, begin to see how you have used the 3D geometry of the model and were able to quickly add some embellishment to it to create a working project detail. For now, save this detail. You'll, later, you'll return to it later in the chapter. So let's save this. Now, I have to go to the men's room. So, that being said, I'm going to WT, ZA, if I can, ZA. I'm going to get rid of this for starters. This is uh, already illustrated. And um, what's going on with these here? Well, they're there. All right, so um, we've made it this far. As you can see, there's a, a lot you could do with the embellishing tool. And I just touched on it. Um, again, uh, uh, it's not, this isn't perfect. I, this instruction definitely isn't perfect. I have struggled with certain aspects of it. But... What I hope is that I'm giving you enough of the foundation that you're going to run with this. You're going to run with it and see that uh, it's not what you may have perceived it to be. Uh, it's a powerful, powerful tool. And uh, Indiana State University, it was a magnificent, magnificent project. And I had it somewhere. When, uh, when I have time, I'm going to bring up the Indiana State University Revit model. It was a real, a real project, and I'm trying to think I had a few other models that I was thinking about possibly showing you. That this is, uh, this is for real. It's not make-believe. It's for real. Granted, I, I guess I, I hold a little bit of, of a begrudging against a lot of the small shops that aren't using it, because I just, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep uh, the end goal in mind, and, and that is to, uh, to evolve to the next... Um, the next tool that's going to be required to expedite these projects because again time isn't the luxury that I have right I don't have the luxury of time and I would think the investors and the principals and the stakeholders don't either right I would think they don't either so hopefully this has um, some reach now Let's just see if we're, where we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up. It's going into some uh, insulation and some uh, creating detail groups. And it's going into using line based detail components. And uh, yeah, so we've got a bit more to cover. Let me just jump forward before I head out. Let me just take another look. Uh, we're going to be talking about detail groups. Oh, yeah, they. And uh, adding detail components to families. And we'll be using uh, some uh, some window mullions, it appears. Uh, we're going to be working along with, it looks like some curtain wall here again. And then, um, uh oh. And then we're going to start talking about using CAD details. It's the interoperability is so, so helpful in a project. It's an Autodesk project, right? So. If the details are already created in AutoCAD, you can refer to them. You can refer to them. Not an X reference. It's not an X reference. You can make it behave like an external reference. But yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that's new. There's a lot that's new. Did anybody know? <laughs> 